The first civilizations were the Egyptian, the Sumerian, and the Indus Valley, with the Sumerian being the oldest by several centuries. The first cities, which predated the Sumerian civilization which developed around them, were in Mesopotamia, meaning the land between the rivers, those rivers being the Tigris and the Euphrates in modern-day Iraq. These earliest cities were ruled by kings, and each such city-state developed around a central temple dedicated to a patron god, whom the citizens believed provided protection and guidance. In the 3rd millennium BC, the individual kingdoms of Sumer were conquered by Sargon, who formed the Akkadian Empire, the world's first empire. Following the Akkadian Empire was the Babylonian Empire, ruled from Babylon by a series of kings, the most famous of whom is Hammurabi, known for his code of laws. Then came the Assyrian Empire in the 1st millennium BC, followed by the short-lived Neo-Babylonian Empire. Like the 1st Babylonian Empire, the Neo-Babylonian Empire was ruled from Babylon. Its most famous ruler was Nebuchadnezzar II, but its last king was Nabonidus, who ruled until Babylon fell to Cyrus the Great and the First Persian Empire. As with the other Mesopotamian cities, Babylon, in both the First and Second Empires, paid homage to a patron god, Marduk, who was associated with the planet Jupiter. Nabonidus, however, raised another deity to preeminence, the moon god, Sin, who was the patron god in other powerful cities in the empire. Because of the centrality of religion and the societal order it created, supplanting the traditional god with another created social unrest in Babylon, at least among the priests. And may be equally disturbing for Babylonian society, for ten years Nabonidus left Babylon and traveled throughout the empire and beyond, perhaps to secure and expand Babylonian rule. He eventually created a shadow capital at Tema, a large oasis in present-day Saudi Arabia, before returning to Babylon. A few years later, in 539 BC, his empire was conquered by Cyrus the Great, and he went down in history as the last king of Babylon. This saga is reminiscent of the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten, nearly 800 years prior, who created upheaval in his society by replacing the pantheon of Egyptian gods with one, the sun god, Aten, and moving Egypt's capital 200 miles north, from Thebes to Amarna. And at least partly because of such social disturbance, the legacy of Akhenaten and Nabonidus centuries later was severely tarnished in the society that succeeded him. This brief look at one small sliver of ancient Babylonian history, however, doesn't end there. Remember when I said Marduk, the patron god of ancient Babylon until Nabonidus became king, was associated with the planet Jupiter? It turns out that about 10 years ago, a historian discovered from ancient cuneiform tablets that the Babylonians used a rudimentary form of calculus to determine the position of Jupiter along the solar ecliptic. The explanation of this is outside the scope of this video, but the basic idea is that they tracked Jupiter's speed across the sky in degrees per day for 60 days, then calculated the area under the curve to determine the distance traveled. Until this historian's discovery, it was generally believed that these types of calculations hadn't occurred until the 14th century AD, nearly 1400 years later. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the world's first ancient civilizations, the king who ruled over the downfall of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, and the advanced mathematical skills of a people who were ahead of their time. Have a great day.